Welcome to the Subconscious Mind Mastery. I'm Thomas Miller, and we are continuing this series that I think we're going to be doing for a long, long time because you guys are loving it. Taking a few minutes on Sunday morning for a little inspiration and meditation. I've been watching a couple of friends go through life-altering situations, and that's kind of the springboard for what we're going to talk about today because As you reflect on our human experience, our journey, if you will, it is one of constantly bumping up against limitations, isn't it? In our last episode, we said, you are God. The Bible says you are God's. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you're going to stone me for saying that I am God? Which of the good works as God are you going to stone me for? Nothing about the good works. Keep doing that. We're going to stone you because you said you are God. That's blasphemy. Boy, things haven't changed much, have they? And, and it always comes from the religious top, doesn't it? But the human experience is an experience of bumping up against limitations, or limited resources, or limited options. And then we ask for divine help. And when divine help shows up, blasphemy! <laughs> But let's think about how, how do we handle these limitations? Because for some people, it becomes a power through it kind of situation. They're going to be very strong and in their learning, knowledge, and training, utilize all of that to muscle through, typically with no mention of God at the table. It's a human effort. Here are a couple of examples that come to mind. The highly skilled surgeon. That's one example. Let me throw another one down, then we'll come back to surgery because it's a pretty good example. The other is rockets, especially manned rockets. Whenever we send a human out into space, that's another situation where the precision of the mathematics and the physics and the design and all of the training goes into now quite reliably being able to send human beings out into space and bring them back safely. Pretty amazing and mostly all human effort. I would say that you'd have to argue pretty hard for those two not to be at the top of the pile of human effort just by itself. Let's think about surgery for a moment. Surgery, I mean of any kind, is totally precise. That skilled surgeon has trained for years. You know, every surgical procedure there is on your body has an exact protocol that medical science follows. If you or I learned that protocol... Enter here, cut here, now this, now that, turn here, clip this, saw here if it's a bone. Every procedure is scripted. So if you or I knew the script and everything went right, we could go in an operating room and do an operation. Any volunteers? (laughs) I didn't think so. But in the skilled hands of somebody trained who knows the process, it can be incredible. You have broken bones from an accident, and the skilled orthopedic surgeon puts you back together, and your bones work again. That changes your life. Or like a surgeon I interviewed in Dallas who takes a non-beating heart and is able to transplant it into somebody else who needs a heart transplant or they will die, and they live a productive life. That's amazing. And, you know, it's that training, too, that enables doctors to be able to often easily do other things well. Yeah, they're smart, but they're trained. They're trained to offer one of the most advanced human services at the top of their game. And if those were your bones that were fixed or your heart that was replaced and now you have new life, you call that doctor a miracle worker. And that's your perspective, but to them, it was just another procedure that they've practiced so many times. And that's good and well, Remember what I said, until something goes wrong. It's what pilots say. It's hours and hours of boredom interrupted by sudden moments of terror. And for us, suddenly life happens. You get a life-threatening diagnosis. Or a boss says, pack your things. Or a partner turns stone cold. Or black suburbans pull up in your driveway. And you're out of options. There is no script. I'm watching two friends go through some massive struggles right now. These are big, life-altering things. There's no script. I know both of these well. In fact, one goes back to childhood. I know the kind of stock these people are cut from. And in both situations, I've been impressed by a common theme. 
And that is that these people are truly trusting God for the outcomes in their situations. So how do we reconcile this with what we talked about last week? You are God's. Greater things will you do. And let's say we even had the training of a surgeon that in some cases could save a life right there on the operating table within your hands. But what about the stuff that is beyond your hands? What if even your finely trained hands could not handle the situation? Or what about your mathematics, physics, rocket scientist-based mind when all of a sudden the rocket is catapulting away from the Earth instead of back toward it? And I know a lot of us, especially in this conversation, in this kind of community, think, well, shouldn't we be able to just speak or command or intend or visualize or think or see? What is all this stuff that we talk about? Can it just happen that way? I mean, Jesus calmed the storm, spoke, raised the dead, commanded, healed the sick, if those were real stories. But we've been talking here about this theme that God is in us. God is part of us, the water bottle from the ocean. The water in the bottle is not the ocean. It's not source. It's not God. But it is part of God. So where then is that thin line between human effort and divine outcome? What's our part and what's God's part? So here are some thoughts. Number one, the old Marianne Williamson quote. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are more powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? And that's the first point. We don't believe in our own power. How would you like a surgeon who walked into the operating room not believing that they could pull off the procedure that was sitting in front of them, i.e. you. So the surgeon walks in and it's like, oh, I don't know, I'm just not capable of this. Oh, I did it yesterday, but I, today's a new day and I've got all these distractions at home and oh my gosh, I don't know that I'm going to be able to pull this off. Don't trust in myself. All of a sudden, all of that training goes out the window and all of a sudden when this patient goes to sleep, I am in charge of this room. I can't bring God into this. I have to figure out a way to pull this thing off. But, oh, I just don't think I can today. <laughs> Dear patient, we have canceled your surgery. <laughs> Thank you. But how often do we live our life like that? Oh, yeah, I've manifested things. Sure, yeah, I manifested a Jeep. I manifested apartments. I've manifested jobs. I've manifested money. I've manifested all this stuff, right? I've manifested a lifestyle. Oh, but I don't think I can do it today. Yeah, all that was before the pandemic. <laughs> before the pandemic. You get the point. All of a sudden, we don't believe in our own power, even if we've seen it firsthand. Let me give you an example to remind you of somebody who has embraced his power. Fred Dodson, when he left New Zealand. Well documented here. Definitely a rattling situation. But he stayed calm, followed his internal prompts, zigged and zagged and did what he needed to do, and then he ultimately trusted Source for the final outcome. And just like our little surgery analogy, how he did it is well documented, just like a surgery is well documented in all the medical literature. Fred has written over 40 books, and it's all in there, all of it. And it's just as precise almost as that surgical outcome. It's like, here, if you do this and this and this, here's how it unfolds. And that really leads up to the second point, because Fred is really good about not being attached to outcomes. That's my second thought here, is being too attached to the results. Remember, we are part of the ocean, but we're not the ocean. A part of that ocean is inside a bottle, a water bottle. That's the earth gig. It's knowing that God is part of us, that things are interconnected, and yet they're separate. It's a water bottle. And that plastic water bottle part of the deal is pretty limited, really. The true power is in that water from the ocean, the source. In fact, why do you buy... This is a good analogy. Think about this. Why do you buy the water bottle in the first place? For the containerability of the plastic container itself? Oh, I'm going to go get a plastic container. I need to contain things. I need to capture something, and I need a container. And You go buy a water bottle. The purpose of the deal is the water, the source, God. The bottle is, 
irrelevant. You don't even think about it. Well, we're the bottle, our bodies. What's in us is the real purpose going on here. But we focus on how well the bottle is going to hold things. And we don't think about the water. Is the lid on tight? Does it have a hole in it? How good does the bottle look? What is the label like? Oh, is it attractive to other people? How does the bottle smell? How does it sound when you rub on it and it squeaks and everything? The focus is all on the bottle. Will the bottle make it through the day? We focus on the outcome. In these stories we've been mentioning, Jesus was not attached to the outcome. Well, maybe an exception of two cases I can think of. One, his friend Lazarus. Lazarus had died, and it says Jesus wept. That was attachment. But his power still came through. He raised him from the dead. The other thing I can think of is when Jesus was protecting himself and his father, the ocean, from the religious leaders, from the naysayers, right? It's like all the attackers. Oh, you can't do that. Blasphemy. And how many times does our own mind scream things out like that? Oh, you can't do that. You're not trained. Walk into that hospital and say, hi, I'm Dr. Miller. I'm here to perform today's heart surgery. And they say, wait a minute. We don't know you. You're not credentialed here. You're not good enough to do this surgery in our facility. You can't have that outcome. Ah, blasphemy. Security, get this man out of here. And yet, if you follow a very precise set of steps, you could actually do that surgery. So you do have the power. It could be within you. And that's the third point. We don't want to release to the higher power. We don't want to lose control of our situation. For many of us, and this is one of my still biggest issues, is a lack of trust. On the surface, we say we trust. But really deep down inside, do we? I mean, society gives it a bad rap. Society is mostly moving away from God. Some are coming back but mostly it's pushing away right now. Or we go back in our mind and we review things in the past. Yeah, I prayed and nothing happened. I don't want to be barking requests up into the air. It's not how it works. Remember, pray rain. We are co-creators. It's a cooperative effort. And yeah, the ocean is a lot bigger than the water bottle, but often we don't think that way. I mentioned these two friends. I am watching situations where total release to God is being brilliantly played out. They've done all they can do. They've done it well. And from here, circumstances will now basically determine the outcome in each situation. But they realize they are part of source, and they are totally reliant on that big, vast ocean for the outcome. Two different styles, two different ways of releasing, but actually releasing is not the best descriptor here. It's partnership. It's saying to source, you and I are one. We are together in this. I've done the part that the water bottle can do. Source is within me, and source is part of this outcome. And allowing source to do its part unobstructed. And when you follow that process... Then you look back and you say, wow, that was miraculous. Or was it? Or did we just tap into the power that's been with us all along? Don't grab the power back. Stay in the partnership mode with something much bigger than us. I mentioned Fred Dodson. He also does music. He's been kind enough to share it so that we can enjoy it together. This is going to be meditation somewhat along the lines of what we do on Sunday night on Level Up. We're going to, we're going to do that monthly now, at least for a while. So we'll bring some of that into here. And the first part of that is thinking of the family that you have surrounding you. There are thousands of people who are on this same journey with you. So if you would like, you could 
touch something that connects you with those people. Maybe it's your Enjoy the Journey bracelet. Maybe it's your phone or whatever device you're listening from. And just connecting and feeling into the energy of a throng of people who are exploring and releasing and committing and partnering on this journey with you together. We're all one. Tune in to the collective energy. Just take a nice, big, deep exhale, and let's do an OM together.
person in mind that might be going on in your life. And you see your power in the situation. It's your deepest fear in your inadequacy. Or in the sheer strength of your power. So now in the spirit of this partnership, Reframe the issue that you're thinking about in a context of love, in a context of full source power with you. And if your focus was on the source, not the water bottle, now what is your desired outcome? bring this back together not only do you have source but we have each other so connect again either through touch or bracelet or whatever the means with all the other well intending people who listen to this Partner. So you too take it from here and enjoy the journey. 